welcome 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 to finally the last uh, presentation uh, of uh, this series welcome to the final presentation of uh, this series we have been going through the week long of uh, our response to what was put outside there as uh, an authoritative document uh, to be used in the CAM meetings in the central Kenya field. A document uh, Bible study lesson 29 in the CAM meetings, the attack on the doctrine of Trinity. Don't confuse Godhead with Trinity. A document prepared by Pastor Jeremy Mwenda Marambi. And uh, it was a five-day presentation, day one to day five. But uh, there are some days which were needed more than one response so we did other two more responses on this and today we are in the last response of this document and uh, we are in the last day which is day five which is day five of the presentation responses on the attack on the doctrine of the trinity and that is what has been put outside there as the standard teaching, uh, confirming that we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And those who are against this are teaching Babylonian doctrine. They are teaching doctrines of the devil. They don't have power to overcome sin, and so forth and so forth. And so we have done, uh, as Gospel Sounders, uh, uh, responses to this. When you go on my timeline on Facebook, you, should, we, you will be able to get these presentations. Tomorrow, we shall be uploading the videos on YouTube so that people may also be able to download them from there and be able to watch them and share, convert to audio and share on flash drives with the people on their memory cards. And uh, I know the people will be blessed. And so, um, so thankful to the Lord that we are coming to the last day. It is not in the nature, and uh, I want to be so clear on this, it is not in the nature of the gospel sounders to do refutations and responses to materials which are there, outside there. This is not the work that the Lord has called the gospel sounders to do. God has called us to finish the work. But due to the demand and due to the request of the people, that we share something of what we believe on this material that was put outside there, uh, the leader of the Gospel Sounders, Brother Zadok, uh, appealed to me to and requested to me to pro produce an, uh, a response to this. And so uh, I decided to do the response um, uh, of the document, but uh, this is not, not the nature of the work of the Gospel Sounders. This is not what we have been called to do. Uh, the Lord has called us to finish the work as medical missionaries yes we will come in uh, 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 in touch with different uh, doctrines which will come uh, face to face with the different views of the people but uh, we we are not going ecumenical we are not going maybe say to tolerate some of the things that are spoken us there but it's not in our nature to write responses as we are doing this uh, but uh, we do sometimes apologetics. I do sometimes apologetics to uh, works requested to be done. And this is not to say that um, we are infallible as gospel sounders. I, as Sammy Wilberforce, that uh, I am infallible and an arbiter of truth. But uh, I, I, I try to stay to the biblical teaching and to the inspiration. And uh, this has uh, kept us safe from uh, many delusions that uh, are outside there. And so I'm glad for this. Uh, uh, presentation which is the last one uh, uh, 
I really don't like going at the people. I didn't like uh, uh, naming uh, and having personality issues with the people. As I said, when I started these presentations, uh, I have never met Pastor Marambi myself. Uh, his name just came up to me when he gave out the document and the, it was forwarded to me. And so I don't have personality issues with anybody. Uh, uh, everyone is brethren. All of us are brethren. And uh, uh, just because somebody has air outside there and has gone astray, it doesn't mean that they have become offshoots and apostates that cannot be recovered. I'm praying that the documents and the refutations will reach to Pastor Marambi and uh, he'll be able to see the folly that he included in his documents that actually it was not even half truth. It was misinformation of what people believe on these things. And so uh, after these uh, presentations, this is the last one, we will be able to put outside there uh, a, a document, a short document touching on all the areas we have touched. It won't go many pages. It will be a, around 15 to 20 pages. It is a, a quick read. You will be able. It is a document that um, has been prepared uh, by uh, Sister uh, Margaret Nyaga and uh, it has uh, been edited by, by me, Sam Wilberforce. And so uh, it is a condensed article con uh, of 20 pages on uh, on the material that Pastor Marambi put outside there. So if you are not able to watch the videos, if you are not able to convert to audios and share with others, you can have a printout of uh, almost 20 pages and uh, be able to share out. Uh, he, the words of Pastor Marambi will be in black and our responses will be in red in the article that is coming out. This is on Monday or on Tuesday. We shall be able to post a short document that covers all the material. Uh, that we have presented uh, in this video, seven responses videos. And so uh, as Gospel Sounders, we are dedicated to sharing the message of God around the globe. And uh, this is the task that the Lord has given unto us. But back into the issue that we are dealing with, this is the final presentation, day five of what uh, Pastor Marambi uh, talks about. And today's uh, uh, last presentation is crucial, so I welcome uh, all of us and let us see what he says in the last day this is what he has put outside there affirmation of the inspired pen of inspiration i dealt with this on day two and day three at large and so i'm not going on the pen on of inspiration so much the holy spirit is christ representative but divested of the personality of the humanity i did a document on this and independent thereof combat with humanity christ could not be in every place uh, personally, therefore, it was for their interest that he should go to the Father and send the Spirit to be his success on earth. No one could then have an advantage because of his location or his personal conduct with Christ. By the Spirit, the Savior would be accessible to all. In this sense, he would be nearer to them than if he had uh, ascended on high, if he had not ascended on high. DA 669.2. Therefore, it implies that the Holy Spirit comfort without end, peace, no real peace or comfort is falsehood. In false theories and traditions, Satan gains his power over the mind and directs men to false standard and misshape their character. The Holy Spirit speaks to the mind and impresses the truth about the heart. Thus he exposes error and expels it from the soul. It is by the spirit of truth working through the word of God that Christ subdues the, uh, his chosen people uh, uh, to himself. And so uh, he concludes by saying the existence of the Holy Spirit uh, from the beginning, God has been working by his Holy Spirit through human instrumentalities for the accomplishment of his purpose in behalf of the fallen race. The same power that sustained the patriarch that gave Caleb and Joshua faith and courage and that made the work of the apostolic church effective has upheld God's faithful children in every succeeding age. The nature of the Holy Spirit is a mystery. Men cannot explain it and we are not ex trying to explain it. The secret thing belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. Deuteronomy 29, 29. This we may seek to understand, but beyond this we are not to penetrate. The highest intellect may tax itself until it is wearied out in the conjectures regarding the nature of the spirit. So the question that we are addressing is uh, the power to overcome sin. That if we do not believe in God, the Holy Spirit, then there it implies that the Holy Spirit comfort without and peace no real peace or comfort is falsehood. And so 
The Holy Spirit speaks to the mind and impresses truth upon the heart. Thus he exposes error and expels it from the soul. It is by the Spirit of truth working through the word of God that Christ subdues his chosen people. So, what is the power to overcome sin? Does the Holy Spirit uh, helping us to overcome sin means that the Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit. We are dealing with the power to overcome sin. And I want just to quote where actually he is quoting and uh, let us look at it uh, sin could be overcome by the third person of the Godhead sin overcome third person of the Godhead uh, I want you to see Pastor Marambi co uh, quotes uh, Desire of Ages page 669 paragraph 2 he quotes um, Desire of Ages, page 669, paragraph 2, but he doesn't quote the whole thing about the power to overcome sin. And this is what I want to deal with in this presentation, the power to overcome sin. This is what I want to deal with because he doesn't quote everything. There is always danger when quotes are given out of context and uh, people does, don't want to follow what actually it is revealed in the context. So I'll read the context that the Holy Spirit helps us overcome sin. We want to see what is the power to overcome sin? What is the only power to overcome sin? And uh, I'll go straight to the quote in it is context from uh, uh, DA 671, uh, paragraph 1 and paragraph Two, and I'll blow it on the screen so that we may be helped to see what is there. And so as we start this uh, session, I want us to humble ourselves and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you have guided us all through the week and the Sabbath. And Father, as we look at these last sentiments, the power to overcome sin, may we not have theoretical knowledge but a practical knowledge of what it is to overcome sin and what it means to be knit with Jesus Christ and the Father. And so, Lord, we pray that uh, you may impress these things on our minds, that uh, we may be able to be safe in the arms of Jesus Christ. In his name I pray. Amen. And so, let us look at the quote in, it is context there. The comfort is called the spirit of truth. His work is to define and maintain the truth. He first dwells in the heart as the spirit of truth, and thus he becomes the comforter. There is comfort and peace in the truth, but no real peace or comfort can be found in falsehood. This is where he quotes, and then he skips the whole lot and goes to 669.2. This is maneuvering about the quotes, which is something I actually accuse him of because he quotes some part, skips some part, and quotes another part. So this is what he posted. The comfort is called the spirit of truth. His work is to define and maintain the truth. He first dwells in the heart as the spirit of truth, and thus he becomes the comforter. And then this is the place he quoted exactly. There is comfort and peace in the truth, but no real peace or comfort can be found in falsehood. And so he skips the first part, he skips the second part, he skips the middle and goes to 669. But let us see what he missed in this quotation. Uh, it is through false theories and traditions that Satan gains his power over the mind. So you can see how Satan possesses the mind. It is through false theories, not even another evil spirit being living in us. By directing men to false standards, he misshapes the character. So this is contrasted with the comforter being in the heart. Through the scripture, the Holy Spirit speaks to the mind. So it is through the Holy Scriptures, through the word of God, that he speaks to us. John 6, 63, the words that I speak unto you are spirit and are life, and impresses truth upon the heart. Thus, he exposes error and expels it from the soul. It is by the spirit of truth, working through the word of God, that Christ subdues his chosen people to himself. And then, as Tamarangi goes to say that whoever denies that the Holy Spirit is not God, uh, that is not God, the Holy Spirit, that he doesn't have the power to overcome sin. And then he skips this whole paragraph of 671.2 and goes to 669.2. And so let us read 671 where he has skipped a lot of things. 
In describing to his disciples the office of the Holy Spirit, Jesus sought to inspire them with the joy and hope that inspired his own heart. He rejoiced because of the abundant help he had provided for his church. The Holy Spirit was the highest of all gifts that he could solicit from his Father for the exaltation of his people. The Spirit was to be given as a regenerating agent, and without this, the sacrifice of Christ would, be, would have been of no avail. Now, brothers and sisters, notice these things that he's keeping. The power of evil had been strengthening for centuries, and the submission of men to this satanic captivity was amazing. Sin could be resisted and overcome only through the mighty agency of the third person of the Godhead, who would come with no modified energy, but in the fullness of the divine power. It is the spirit that maketh effectual what has been wrought out by the world's Redeemer. It is by the spirit that the heart is made pure. Through the spirit, the believer becomes a partake of the divine nature. Christ has given his spirit as the divine power to overcome all hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil and to impress his own character upon his church. So Christ has given his spirit as the divine power to overcome sin. This is what Pastor Marambi skipped to actually quote. And so this giving half of the information and leaving out the other half is maneuvering on the quotes and giving half truths to your audience that they may not be able to grasp the totality of the truth. And uh, I'm not judging the motives. I'm not judging the character of uh, the pastor. What I'm saying is that uh, this picking up of quotes not in context and giving them out and not explaining to the people what you are missing in the middle, it is actually maneuvering on the quotes and it is not a good way of presenting the truth. So let us go deeply into this. What is the power to overcome sin? Is it God, the Holy Spirit? And if we don't have the God, God the Holy Spirit, then it means that um, we cannot overcome sin. What are the issues at stake in this great controversy? What is the power to overcome sin? Let us go to the presentation and delve in it uh, in a more fuller sense. And um, I'll be running through the materials. Uh, if you need the PowerPoints, they are there. You are free to send a message to any of the Gospel Sounders uh, member that is... Uh, Brother Ben, Brother Zadok, Brother Wycliffe, or uh, me, myself, Sammy Wilberforce, and we shall be able to get you to get the PowerPoints to you free of charge so that uh, you may look at them in context. And uh, if you have any issues, you have any question, you may tell us where we have error in uh, uh, putting this um, uh, out. And so what is the power to overcome sin? The only power to resist sin, keep the commandments of God and the faith of the third person of Jesus Christ. I, I, I like to call to your attention something so amazing in the book of First John. The book of First John, brothers and sisters. The power to overcome in First John chapter 2, verses 13. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning, I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. So the way to overcome sin is to have uh, the word of God abiding in our hearts. The division of Psalms 119 verse uh, 9 to 11, division of Psalms, uh, 119, verses 9 to 11. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto unto thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee, or let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I may not sin against thee. So the power to overcome sin, it is in the word of God, and uh, how 
Is it that the power to overcome sin, it is in the word of God? Christ says in John 6, 63, that uh, the words that he speaks unto us, they are life and spirit. And in John 17, 17, we are told that sanctify them with the word. The word is the truth. So the power to overcome sin is contained in the word of God. That is the third person of the Godhead. It is the vehicle to which actually we are able to overcome sin. The spirit also is given by the angels. The spirit is shed on earth by Jesus Christ himself. And so we are not just limited to the word of God. The word of God is there to restrain us from uh, Satan deceiving us that he is the angel of light. But also Christ can give us his spirit. God can give us his spirit. Uh, you can uh, um, actually recognize that in John 20, 22, when Christ breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So, the word three great powers of heaven appears 29, have 29 occurrence in the materials of E.G. White, 15 in the original, three highest powers, 12 occurrences in the original, four, third person of the Godhead, 21 occurrences, four in original, threefold names, seven occurrences, one in original, the three living persons of the heavenly trio, five occurrences, and one in original, three great worthies, four occurrences, one in original, three holiest being, two occurrences, one in original, three holy dignitaries of heaven, one occurrences, one in original. Uh, Ellen White wrote that uh, all these spiritualistic representations are simply nothingness. They are imperfect and true. God cannot be compared with the things his hands have made. The Father cannot be described by the things of the earth. But uh, I'll skip over. Uh, and uh, we have the third person of the Godhead four times. Second person of the Godhead zero. First person of the Godhead zero. God the Son zero. God the Holy Spirit zero. Persons in the Godhead, zero. Persons of the Godhead, zero. Triangle God, zero. And Trinity is only used once, twice. That is by, uh, uh, in the book of uh, Evangelism, 665. The word Trinity is used in the book of uh, Evangelism, uh, I think, 625 or 665, something of that time. And also she uses, uh, that is by, Leroy from it is used by Leroy from in the book Evangelism as a title which Ellen White never put there, and always uh, and also the the second time that you find uh, the word Trinity in the, uh, and it is questionable when you see the stars there it is questionable, when uh, the, the 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 other time it is used is when she is speaking the Trinity of the last of eyes the last of flesh and uh, the pride of life, and so. Uh, who is the third person of the Godhead or what is this power, the divine power that helps us overcome sin the power, it is the power of the most high in Luke chapter 135 it's the power of God, Romans 116 Christ the power and wisdom of God 1 Corinthians 124 the power of our Lord Jesus Christ 1 Corinthians 5 4 the power of the Holy Spirit, Romans 15, 13. The power of the Spirit of God, verse 19. And so this uh, divine power that has been given, the third person of the Godhead that has been given to overcome sin, we are told that it is the power of the Most High. It is the divine Spirit of Christ, the omnipresent, the representative of the Father and the Son, and it is the power of the Most High. And... Uh, the work is laid out before every soul that has acknowledged his faith in Jesus Christ by baptism and has become a receiver of the pledge from the three persons, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy uh, uh, Spirit. And uh, two personages are clearly defined in the scripture. John 8, 18, I am one that testifies. My Father also testifies of me, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent, God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord, uh, God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord, God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, one God the Father and one Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, and there are so many references that uh, refers to the personages identified in the scripture who have this power to overcome sin. The only true God of John 17, 3 has a spirit and Jesus has a spirit as a divine being 
and in his humanity. And so in these uh, personages of the Godhead, there is divinity. All of them have divinity and they give forth their spirit to overcome sin. The spirit is all divine in it is urgency and demonstration. So the third person of the Godhead has the fullness of divinity which actually helps us to overcome sin. Adventist homepage 350. Do not forget that you have a comforter, the Holy Spirit which Christ has appointed. You are never alone. If you will listen to the voice that now speaks to you, if you will respond without delay to the knocking at the door of your heart, come in Lord Jesus that I may sup with thee and thee with me, the heavenly guest will enter. When this element, which is all divine, abides with you, there is peace and rest. Uh, when you look at uh, the titles and uh, the words used on the Holy Spirit, element, eat, power, fire, water, you start realizing that the Holy Spirit is a mysterious nature, has a mysterious nature, and uh, it is not our duty to actually enter into the nature of the Holy Spirit. It's a mystery. But uh, we know from inspiration and in the Bible where this Holy Spirit proceeded from, it has been shed forth by the Father to us. That is Titus chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And uh, 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 Acts, uh, of, uh, uh, in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 2, verses uh, 33 downwards. And so this is the element, the divine power in fullness of the Godhead, given by Jesus Christ in himself, Christ in us, the hope of glory. The Holy Spirit is Christ's representative by divested of all the personality of humanity. This is int interesting and independent thereof. Cumbered with humanity, Christ could not be in every place personally. And this is what Pastor Marambi co uh, quoted, but did not quote the whole thing. So, the Holy Spirit is all divine in personality. Uh, he was God while upon the earth, but he divested himself of the form of God, and in it instead took the form and fashion of man. So, uh, when you look at the use of the word divested, let us look at this quote first. Combat with humanity, Christ could not be in every place personally. Therefore, it was altogether for their advantage that he should leave them, go to his Father, and send the Holy Spirit to be his success on earth. The Holy Spirit is himself, who is himself, Jesus Christ, divested of the personality of humanity and independent thereof. He will represent himself as present in all places by his Holy Spirit as the omnipresent. So the himself in the quote is Jesus himself. And then we are told in Desire of Ages, the Holy Spirit is divested of the personality of hum humanity. And in 14 MR page 23, we are told that the Holy Spirit is Christ divested of humanity. And so this power to overcome sin is the omnipresence of the Spirit of Christ. When you look at, um, and uh, I want to blow something on the screen. Is it 14 MR? 179.2? 14 MR, 179.2, this is what we get. It is not essential for you to know and be able to define what the Holy Spirit is. Uh, Christ tells us that the Holy Spirit is the Comforter, and the Comforter is the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth, which the Father shall send in my name. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another Comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. John 14, 16, and 17. This refers to the omnipresence of the Spirit of Christ called the Comforter. And so the Holy Spirit is this distinct personality of the Father and the Son stripped of humanity. And that's why we say that uh, the Holy Spirit is Christ's Spirit because it is divested of humanity, it is the div it's divinity in its fullness, no humanity in it. And uh, 
That is what Fortin Mar says, the Holy Spirit himself is divested of the personality of humanity and independent thereof. You are looking at uh, uh, the only power to overcome sin. What is it? Whom does it come from? So, what is to divest or to be divested? To strip us of clothes, to deprive of rights or property, dispossess, to be free of, freed, to be disposed of. And so, how can you strip off the Holy Spirit of what didn't have? It doesn't make sense in that way. So sin could be resisted and overcome only through the mighty agent of the third person of the Godhead who will come with no modified energy but in the fullness of the divine power. And Christ has given his Holy Spirit as the power to overcome sin. Uh, look at DA 671. Christ has given his Spirit as divine power to overcome all hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil and to impress his own character upon his church. Look at uh, Testimonies, Volume 8, 291-1903. There is but one power that can break the hold of evil from the hearts of men, and that is the power of God in Jesus Christ. There is but one power that can break the hold of evil from the hearts of men. And that is the power of God in Jesus Christ. And so God sheds his spirit to his children through, through Jesus Christ. Only through the blood of the crucified one is there cleansing from sin. His grace alone can enable us to resist and subdue the tendencies of our, our fallen nature. Greater works than this shall he do because I go unto my Father. He did not refer me to miracle working, but all that will take place under the agency of the Holy Spirit. The wonderful teaching of the apostle, their words of courage and trust will assure all that it was not in their own power that they work, but in the power of Christ, and that is the Holy Spirit. By an agent as unseen as the wind, Christ is constantly working upon the heart. The prince of the power of evil can only be held in check by the power of God in the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. I think you can see that uh, by claiming that people, if they refuse, there is God, the Holy Spirit, they cannot overcome sin. That is a far-fetched statement from a pastor. That is a far-fetched statement. It is the power of God in Jesus that helps the sinner overcome sin. When he receives the word of Jesus Christ by faith, when he receives Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God that was uh, uh, crucified for our sins, Christ breathes upon him the Holy Spirit. Christ, through his words, continually sanctifies him as he believes in these words. You are heard, I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. The prince of this world came and did nothing in Jesus. John 14, 30, because the Father who dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. God was working in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The only defense against evil is the indwelling of Christ in the heart through faith, in his righteousness. Christ is the source of every right impulse. He's the only one that can implant in the heart enmity against sin. The Christian life is not a modification or, or an improvement of the old, but a transformation of nature. There is a death to self and sin and a new life altogether. This change can be brought about only by the effectual working of the Holy Spirit. DA 172, the transformation of character which can be wrought only by the Spirit of God, DA 605. The power of Christ alone can work the transformation in heart and mind. Alone. You notice the word alone, alone, alone. It means that there is no other power to overcome sin but the agency of the Holy Spirit in the heart. Thank you, brother, weekly for this drink, uh, which gives life. 
We are to commune with God through the agents of the Holy Spirit. Signs of the time, January 16, 1893. Through Christ alone will the Lord hold communication with man. The Spirit will bear witness with your spirit that you are indeed children of God. You may commune with Christ who will be within you. A whole of glory. We are looking at the power to overcome sin. Pastor Marambi has said, if you don't believe in God, the Holy Spirit, then you cannot overcome sin. But uh, as we are saying, and he, he says that uh, this is the pain of inspiration. So we are looking at the pain of inspiration. You, you, you haven't seen me quote from the Bible so far. Why? Because he said that uh, the inspiration says that if you don't believe in God, the Holy Spirit, then you cannot overcome sin. And so we are looking at inspiration. What does it say? What is the power to overcome sin? Thy word have I hid in my heart, Psalms 119, verse 11, that I may not sin against thee. Uh, Desire of Ages 676. Uh, without me, you cannot overcome one sin or resist one temptation. Without who? Without Christ. Only Christ can cleanse the soul uh, temple. Only Christ can cleanse the soul temple. There is no comforter like Jesus, so tender and so true. He is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. His spirit speaks to the heart. The influence of the Holy Spirit is the life of Christ in the soul. Review and Herald, October 26, 1897. His spirit is equal to the life of Christ. You start understanding, according to 2 Peter 1.4, uh, according to 2 Peter 1 4, we are told that um, uh, it has been given unto us exceeding and precious promises to be partakers of what? Of divine nature, having escaped the corruption and the lust that are in this world. And uh, how do we become partakers of this divine nature? It is by the indwelling power of God, it is by indwelling power of Jesus Christ in our hearts. And uh, you, you start understanding that um, the Holy Spirit is the life of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is the life of the Godhead. That is the life of the divinity. The germinating principle, I can use that. The principle of, the, of life in divinity is the Holy Spirit. So when Christ gives us the Holy Spirit, he gives us his own life because that is the germinating principle. It is the second Adam became a quickening spirit, is it? Yes. And so it is his life in us through faith in his word, through the ministration of angels, through the breath of his life, that we partake of this divine nature to be able to overcome sin in our life. So the Holy Spirit is the germinating principle of the divinity, is that life of the divi of divinity, is the divine life. And uh, so it is only by partaking of this that um, we can be able to overcome sin. It is our privilege to have Jesus with us at all times and in all places. In order to have this might help by our side, we must empty the soul of everything that will corrupt or tarnish it uh, this is our work. It is to keep the eye fixed upon the glory of God and be constantly seeking to yoke up with Christ as our companion and uh, our friend. And uh, con continued on. Uh, they have a teachable spirit. They feel they are dependent upon God and the Holy Spirit is with them to help their infirmities. It will quicken and energize the mind direct their, their, their thoughts and aid in the presentation of truth. Christ alone can direct the thoughts of right. He alone can give us noble aspiration and uh, fashion our characters after the divine similitude. Uh, there's a lot of controversy when it comes to the Holy Spirit being in the Word of God. Uh, we are told that every, every seed has a germinating principle, is it? And uh, whoever is born of God does not continue to sin because the seed of he who was born him 
remaineth in him. And uh, the word of God is the seed, is it? And every germinate, every seed has in itself the germinating one. So, why is the word of God different with other novels and other textbooks? It is the seed of man. Huh? And humanity doesn't have divinity to germinate those words. The word of God itself contains this germinating principle, which is the Holy Spirit. And that's why it can say, sanctify them with thy word, the truth, thy word is what? Is truth. So, the only person who dwelt among us, the only person who was touched with the feeling of our infirmities, our only person acquainted with the grief and carried our sorrows, the only one tempted in all points as we are, and learned obedience by the things he suffered, was both the Son of God and the Son of Man, and he bestows upon us his spirit to be able to be overcome us. His victory is our victory. Sin could be resisted and overcome only through the mighty agent of the third person of the Godhead, 671, and we shall keep on seeing this. Christ has given his divine spirit as divine power to overcome all hereditary and cultivated tendencies to, to evil. His, Jesus Christ's grace alone can enable us to resist and subdue the tendencies of our fallen nature, the grace of Christ. And when you read the uh, uh, steps to Christ, Page uh, 52, paragraph 2, it says that the grace is the Holy Spirit. The grace is the Holy Spirit. Christ is the source of every right impulse. He is the only one that can implant in the heart enmity against sin. Um, the only defense against evil is the indwelling of Christ in the heart through faith in his righteousness. Desire of Ages, 3.24. And then without me, you can do nothing. This is quoted from uh, the book of John, chapter 15. Listen to Our Father Cares, page 36. Our Father Cares, page uh, 36. By partaking of the Spirit of God, conforming to the law of God, man become a partaker of the divine nature. Christ brings his disciples into a living union with himself and with the Father. Through the working of the Holy Spirit upon the human mind, man is made complete in Christ Jesus. Unity with Christ establishes a bond of unity with one another. This unity is the most convincing proof of the world of majesty and virtue of Christ and of his power to take away sin. And this is uh, uh, Father Cares, page uh, 36, our father cares. Page 36. And so we find that um, we are finding over and over that uh, the power to overcome sin is the indwelling spirit of God. The indwelling spirit of Jesus Christ in our heart makes us to be able to overcome sin makes us be able to overcome uh, makes us to be able to overcome uh, to overcome uh, to overcome sin. And uh, continuing in our presentation, the only power to overcome sin. The Spirit of God is equal to the divine nature, the Spirit of Christ and Spirit of the Father. We will come to and make our board with him. Christ's power can take away sin. Only he won the victory over sin. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to help them that are 
uh, tempted. In John chapter 14, verse 16, he promises, I'll pray the Father, and he will, shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. The Father gives another comforter. There are two comforters. If a man loves me, my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. And uh, in Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, we are told that because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son in your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Uh, John 15, 26, when the comforter is come, who I will send unto you from the Father, which proceeded from the Father. The Father gives another comforter, Jesus sent the comforter. The comforter comes from the Father, the comforter proceeds from the Father. So it proceeds from the Father, shed through the Son, and unto those who believe in God. Signs of the Time, December 1, 1898. He determined to give his representative the third person of the Godhead. The gift could not be exalted. He will give all gifts in one, and therefore the divine spirit that converting, enlightening, and sanctifying power would be his donation. The Desire of Ages, page 805. The impartation of the Spirit is the impartation of the life of Christ. So the third person of the Godhead is the Spirit of Christ, the divine power to overcome sin. Christ gives them the breath of his own spirit, the life of his own life. And you see, he says, Christ gives them the Spirit breath of his own spirit the life of his own life the holy spirit puts forth it is highest energies to work in the heart and mind Hosea 6 3 col page 66 and 67 as the plant receiveth the sunshine, the dew, and the rain, we are to open our hearts to the Holy Spirit. The work is to be done not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts, the cry for six. If we keep our minds stayed upon Christ, he will come unto us as the rain. He will come to us as what? The rain. As the rain, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and who shall be sent? Jesus Christ, Acts chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. So when we believe in Jesus Christ, he comes to us as the rain, and we know that the rain is the Holy Spirit. And God says that uh, the refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send who? He shall send Jesus Christ. Look at this, Desire of Ages, page 111. By the way, this is a book that every Adventist should read now. He who, has the, who, he who was the foundation of the ritual and economy of Israel will be looked upon as it is enemy and destroyer. He who had proclaimed the law upon Sinai will be condemned as transgressor. He who had come to break the power of Satan will be denounced as Baal Zebub. So Christ is the one who came to break the power of Satan. Uh, looking at the baptism of Jesus, all things are delivered unto me by my Father, Matthew 11, 27. The Father has given all things into his hand, John 3, 35. The Father had given all things into his hand, John 3, 13, 3. For he has put all things under his feet, 1 Corinthians 15, 27. He has appointed him the heir of all things, Hebrews 1, 2, and given him a name which is above every name. So has the Father given that the Son should have life in himself. 
by what power or by what name have you done this thing? By the name, by the power of Jesus Christ. And they went about doing miracles. Mark chapter 16 verse 20. The Lord was with them. The Lord was working with them. By the power of the Holy Spirit, not by might. So go ye therefore, he said, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. And uh, I looked at this uh, in great, at great length when I was doing presentation number two, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. Uh, the name, what that, does the name contain? Uh, the Father, a personal God, and of Son, a personal Prince and Savior and of the Holy Ghost sent from heaven to represent Christ. And I dwelt at length with this verse. You can go in presentation number two, uh, number two on this series on my timeline, which deals with Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to uh, 20. So I'll not touch on that so much. The, these quotes, I dealt with them, the great powers. And uh, I'm going through the quotes I didn't go through. By partaking of the Spirit of God, conforming to the law of God, man becomes a partake of the divine nature. Christ brings his disciples into a living union with himself and with the Father. Through the working of the Holy Spirit upon the human mind, man is made complete in Christ Jesus. Unity with Christ establishes a bond of unity with one another. This unity is the most convincing proof to the world of the majesty and virtue of Christ and of his power to take away sin. MS 111, 1903. 1, uh, 1903, yes. The Savior is our comforter. This I have proved him to be. As faith, we look to Jesus. Our faith pierces the shadow and we adore God for his wondrous love in giving Jesus the comforter. Let them study the 17th of John and learn how to pray and how to live the prayer of Christ. He is the comforter. He will abide in their hearts, making their joyful. His words will be to them as the bread of life. The scripture clearly indicates the relation between God and Christ, and they bring to view as clearly the personality and the individuality of each. And uh, they give out their spirit. God is the Father of Christ, and Christ is the what? The Son of of God. To Christ has been given an exalted position. He has been made equal with the Father and all the concepts of God are open to his Son. And how are they done by the Spirit? Our sanctification is the work of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is the fulfillment of the covenant that God has made with those who bind themselves up with him to stand with him, with his Son, and with his Spirit in holy fellowship. So, God is the source of all. He is the source of the Son. He is the source of the Spirit. Have you been born again? Have you become a new being in Christ Jesus? Then cooperate with the three great powers of heaven who are working in your behalf. God has his Son and has his Spirit. And economically we have three great powers of heaven. Uh, Acts of Apostle, page 56. Behold, the Son of God bowed in prayer to his Father. Though he is the Son of God, he strengthened his faith by prayer and by communion with heaven, gathers to himself power to resist evil and to minister to the needs of men, the power of God, how God anointed Jesus Christ and how he went about doing good. Letter 53 to W.W. W. Warren Prescott, January 25, 1904. The three great powers of heaven pledge themselves to punish the Christian with all assistance he requires. The spirit changes the heart of stone to the heart of flesh, and by, take, by partaking of the word of God, Christians obtain an experience that is after the divine similitude. When Christ abides in the heart by faith, the Christian is the temple of God. So, Christ abides in the heart by faith, by partaking 
of his word. And what is faith? Faith is believing that the word of God will accomplish what it has said it will do. How does faith come? It comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Uh, the Godhead was stirred with pity for the race and the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit gave themselves the working of our out of the plan of redemption. If you have a problem with this quote, go to my uh, Facebook page. There is not section. There is a play. There is a, a, an article. The Godhead was stirred with pity, and uh, it is a uh, a good document that was done by a brother, and uh, uh, it has some good materials. Now, it is interesting to note that uh, the Holy Spirit is never mentioned by a Jewite before or after the era of sin. And uh, I'll challenge anyone outside there, if you have ever found the Holy Spirit mentioned before, and after sin. Let me have it. It is operational for sanctifying his creatures separated by sin. When there is no separation, God deals with his creation directly without the need of his interceding spirit. The Godhead was stirred with pity for the human race. Messages bearing divine credentials have been sent to God's people. The glory, the majesty, the righteousness of Christ full of goodness and truth have been presented. The fullness of the Godhead in Jesus Christ has been set forth among us. The fullness of the divinity in Jesus Christ has been set forth among us with beauty and loveliness. To charm all whose hearts were not close to prejudice, we know that God has wrought among us. This is uh, Review and Herald 9, 27, 18, 19. And uh, I believe he's, she's talking about uh, the message of uh, Wagner and Etijones. The word was in the beginning. The mind cannot grasp the ages that span in this phrase. It is not given to men to know when or how the Son was begotten. We know that Christ proceeded forth and came from God, John 8.42. But it was so far back in the ages of eternity as far to be far beyond the grasp of the mind of man. But... Uh, All things proceeded ultimately from God the Father. Even Christ Himself proceeded and came forth from the Father. But it has been, it has, but it has pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell, and that He should be the direct, immediate agent in every act of creation. Our object in this investigation is to set forth Christ's rightful position of equality with the Father, in order that His power to redeem may be better appreciated, meaning His Spirit. I won't go to Leroy Froome. This is another study. The Holy Spirit has free working independent agency. The God of heaven uses his spirits as it pleases him. And human minds, human judgment, and human method can no more set boundaries to it is working or prescribe the channel through which it shall operate than they can say to the wind, I bid you to blow in certain direction and to conduct yourself in such and such a manner. So, the power that we are talking about here is the power of God to overcome sin. Through his representative, the Holy Spirit, God in Christ, still ministers to the children of men. Australian Union Conference record. And this is so beautiful the way it has been put. Through his representative, the Holy Spirit, God in Christ still ministers to the children of men. The Lord Jesus acts through the Holy Spirit for it is his representative. Through it, he infuses spiritual life in through the soul. But in Amar, we find that uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit, this refers to the omnipresence of the Spirit of Christ called the Comforter. So, in closing, Think of Christ's humiliation. He united humanity with divinity. A divine spirit dwelt in a temple of flesh. He united himself with the temple. Youth Instructor, December 20, 1900. And this is what Christ wants to do 
in us a divine spirit to dwell in a temple of flesh. They Jewish did not yield themselves as holy temples for the divine spirit. The divine spirit works through the powers and faculties given to man. The presence and agents of the divine spirit that fill his Paul's soul. Only through the divine spirit will the word be living and powerful to renew the soul unto eternal life. You must be born of this divine spirit. Dear 189, he imparts to them his divine spirit. Dear 826, the divine spirit will be his Christ donation, full of Christ's own divine spirit, our father cares. A divine hand that is leading them, a divine spirit impressing their hearts. Letter 56, 1886. Peter also writing under the illumination of the divine spirit spoke of the day star. God is light and in the words, I am the light of the world. Christ declared his oneness with God. He was the spiritual light, dear 464. The spirit of life in Jesus Christ, Romans 8, 2. And so, uh, brothers and sisters, we find that um, the power to overcome sin is uh, the Spirit of God shed through His Son, Jesus Christ, unto a repentant believer. And so, by Pastor Marambi saying that uh, not believing in God, the Holy Spirit will not have the power to overcome sin, I think this is a statement that he has to think about it. And I believe by humbling ourselves before God, God will be able to reveal more things unto us. Otherwise, God bless you and uh, thank you for joining with us in these presentations. Share them where you feel that uh, we have been uh, dealt with quotes in partiality. We shall be able to respond to you. And uh, feel free to conduct uh, Gospel Sounders at Rekindling, the Reformation at gospelsounders.org, and uh, at our Facebook page, uh, uh, Rekindling the Reformation Group, and on my timeline, and uh, other leaders, Brother Bernard, Brother Zadok, and Brother Wycliffe. Otherwise, God bless you, and uh, wherever you are, have a blessed time. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for... Uh, this time, and we pray that uh, truth may continue to be impressed on our minds. Uh, falsehood do not sanctify the heavenly Father, but uh, the truth sanctifies. And so, may you impress truth on our minds that we may be sanctified. It is not a burden, it is not painful to live error, but Lord, when we reject truth, we displace thee, and uh, it is painful because many things uh, come out of these things which are not good. Thank you for thy loving kindness, and we know that uh, no one has passed. Uh, uh, there is no sin which is so great that it cannot be forgiven, Lord. If only we can see our follies and uh, how we have uh, gone away from the tracks of truth. And Lord, be repentant and come back. You will be able to save us. And so abide with us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.